Hey, what's going on? This is Dylan with Dylan Talks Tone. Today we're going to talk about the history of lipstick pickups. This has been a hugely, hugely requested video in the comments. Today's just coffee in the cup. It's really cold outside. Enjoying the... Well, I mean, I can still sit outside and it's almost February, so that's pretty sweet. All right, 1947. A guy named Nathan Daniel starts a company and he starts building amps. Uh, selling them to Sears and places like that. So Dan Electro and Silvertone. And then in about 1954, he says, you know what? We're gonna make guitars. Um, and he comes up with the Dan Electro and the Silvertone that are still, you know, very budget things. They weren't made out of wood. They were made out of particle board. I actually had a 1961, I think, Silvertone with this pickup that we're gonna talk about today in it unbelievable sounding pickup really super low output and we're going to get to why in a minute first of all let's talk about what they're not so here is a telecaster neck pickup this is not a lipstick pickup people call it that all the time and when they want to say what is a lipstick pickup they always uh, for some reason think of this we've discussed this before this is a metal cover over like a regular single coil bobbin with normal magnets. So these are this particular one is gonna be for a flat six pickup at Dylan Talk Stone. Alnico five uh, rod magnets, normal single coil telecaster with a metal pickup cover on top of it. Uh, don't ever buy gold hardware. I don't like gold hardware, I think it's gross. Just my opinion. Anyway, uh, telecaster neck pickup. That is not a lipstick pickup. People call it that all the time. That is not what it is. It has nothing to do with it. it is not even connected. There is no similarities. Stop calling it that. Okay, we got that out of the way. So uh, in, this is a little kind of a side, but it's relevant. In the 20s, 30s, and 40s, especially, and 50s, lipstick, like for your lips, like if you're, into that came in a tube uh there's a company like a there's like three big manufacturing companies one of them that i found and is very interesting is called scoville and they actually made these very ornate very pretty um lipstick tube cases so it's not like today where you go and buy a piece of pair, uh, lipstick and you just throw it away when it's out they would actually have inserts and they would actually take the lipstick itself and put it into a case and there was like standardized sizes for these metal lipstick tubes and they would make them super pretty this one for example uh is by a brand called hazel bishop they were supposed to be like one of the first people to come out with lipstick that like didn't rub off on somebody else like if you know the lady kissed somebody or you know on your coffee cup or whatever it was supposed to stay on that's not important what's important is look at what this thing looks like physically if you slide that case off the end it looks exactly like the side of a lipstick pickup Nathan Daniel actually purchased surplus or there were tons of ways to get them uh, lipstick tubes that were available that he could buy. So Nathan Daniel was a lot like Leo Fender and the fact that he was trying to make these things as cheap as possible. And he's like, wait a minute, I think I could use lipstick tubes. They were actually lipstick tubes at that time. Because of the length of lipstick tubes and that standardized kind of like dimension, if you took two of them and you put them end to end, it was actually longer than modern lipstick tubes or modern single coil pickups because lipsticks were longer. As a result of that, there weren't any kind of standardized bobbins. So they actually took, uh, he actually designed this pickup to actually have a bar magnet with wire just wrapped around it. There was no bobbin. Um, I tried really hard to find a really good representation or picture of this but I could not find one. And the reason is nobody wants to take them apart. 
Um, I mean, I've owned these pickups before, but you don't want to take them apart because there's no bobbin. It's literally wire wrapped around like a, a bar magnet. So if you were to take it apart, there's a 90% chance that you're going to damage this thing and it's not going to be usable again. I can understand why I, it's hard to find like documentation and a picture to show you of what it actually looks like or one of these. So the ones we have today are a little bit different because they're standardized to fit in like a normal single coil hole. So here's an example of one of ours that's taken apart. So we've got these two lipstick tube ends. Okay, so this is not actual lipstick tubes. This is, these are reproduced for the purpose of making a hum, uh, lipstick pickup. When you pull it apart, what you have inside, uh, and it makes it a lot easier to make them, is this humbucker, mini humbucker bobbin. So it's a mini humbucker bobbin slid inside there, obviously after you wind the coils on it and there's some little holes here where the wires can come out. Okay. And then you got these little tiny screws. These are really a pain to make. Uh, there would be another screw on the other side and then it would sit on top of this base plate and be screwed to this base plate. And then you would have this lipstick pickup that is a little bit smaller bobbin. Um, I typically use 43 gauge wire on these when I wind them and then you can put whatever magnet you want like El Nico 3, El Nico 4, El Nico 5. Um, you could make it pretty much however you want it, wind it however you want. Um, and then this is the standardized length of a Stratocaster screw uh, you know, pattern so that you could actually put this into a pickup that the, the same pickup hole as a Strat. Um, and, and that's it. That's what that lipstick tube pickup is these days. Of course, it was different back then. But what it is not, for obvious reasons, now that we see this taken apart, it is not a Telecaster neck pickup. Obviously, wouldn't even sound the same, wouldn't even be the same. Of course, you put a bar magnet in here instead of single pole pickups here, like, like a regular single coil dimensions totally different it just it's not even there's no way it's even the same if you have some old lipstick tubes from the 40s or 50s and you have a bare bar magnet and some coil wire you could make some accurate ones uh, you're not going to find too many of them today they're very difficult to find you can actually buy the guitar on ebay like a, a bad one with a bad neck or something and the pickups will be worth more than the whole guitar will because the early sil silver tones and Dan Electros didn't have like truss rods in them. So um, sometimes you can find one where the neck is warped or something and you can get it cheap on eBay and then just rip the pickup out of it because the neck isn't usable. Um, I've seen that before too. So uh, if you can get your hands on one of these things, they're really cool. The problem is they don't fit in a normal like strat hole or something. Uh, I'll tell you what, let's go over a couple of questions from our past video. And uh, yeah, let's do it. Somebody told me in the last video, I need to make sure that my Dylan logo faces this way. Uh, make sure you go to the website. You can actually get these cups uh, at Dylan Talks Tone. Oh, also, shameless plug for my other YouTube channel. You know, my wife and I have a YouTube channel together and all the stuff that doesn't have to do with guitars, like all of our camera gear, um, we just bought a new Jeep, which was really sweet, and some other major life-changing things. And people are always like curious about why we're shooting videos outside, where, why our house changed, all that kind of stuff. All that's on that YouTube channel and the associated podcast. And so if you're curious about any of that stuff, we'll put a link to it like right here and down below and you can go check it out. DG says, could you please explain whether Rick Beto's video about different sound of different string gauges is BS or not? I say if you adjust the pickup height, a heavier gauge string will sound more like a lighter gauge. Uh, by the way, I love it, but as a coffee fan, I like coffee best. This is coffee today. Um, first of all, I'm not gonna like call Rick Beto's video BS. Um, I actually, he's in Atlanta, so he's only a couple hours from me, and I would really love to do a collab with him or at least meet him or and do an interview with him or something. It would be really fun. String gauge is so subjective. There's really no point in making a rule about it. I think you just have to try stuff. Um, you know, for the people that say, oh, light gauge strings, the tone's lost and all that stuff. I think that's BS. I think um, how you interact with the strings and how you interact with the guitar is the fundamental of your tone. 
and how the setup is with the guitar, those things are more fundamental with, with your tone. And so, and they, it really does affect that. Your interaction with the guitar, the string gauge does. That's very individual to every person. So I don't make any rules about that. I don't care about it. You know, I play what I play, you play what you play. And it's not, if I say you should use a certain string gauge, it might not be right for you. So there's no point in arguing about it, in my opinion. Brian Brown, a very nice and concise explanation. Could you do another video where you explain why some cheap pickups tend to have a strong microphonic effect, where high quality pickups have much less, if any microphonic effect? So yeah, microphones versus pickups. They are not the same thing. However, uh, what makes a pickup microphonic? What makes it to where you can put a cell phone next to it and hear the music through your amp? What makes it to where when you tap on it or talk into some micro mic pickups, they sound like a microphone? There, there are reasons for that. It's not because they're microphones. Um, and we are going to do a video on that. Rusty Buckets, thank you. Very informative. Talking with your spouse saves marriages. Hit that like button. I agree on all counts. You know, my wife's so awesome. She's the one that told me to even do this in the first place. She's the one that told me to buy a Kemper. She's the one that told me not to quit uh, when I wanted to quit making YouTube videos. So if you have uh, a spouse that really, really believes in what you do and you talk about it and communicate about it, to me, that's the coolest part, and that's why we're awesome together. Um, Randy Andrian says, Randy Andrian says, uh, Dylan, I like the way you explain thing in guitar. There is one thing that bothers me. It's about pull pieces and position of the strings. Do guitar strings have to be placed directly above the pull pieces? What happens if I use a non f spaced pickup like on a tremolo guitar? That's usually 53 millimeters instead of 52 millimeters on an F space. So what he's talking about is like if you take a Charvel, for example, and you and you put a 52 millimeter pickup in it, the pickup poles will be a little bit inside of the outside strings. Ideally, you want them underneath it totally. Does that mean that if you have some parts in a drawer that are going to get you playing guitar today, you should not use them? No. Put whatever you have in the guitar. If you're going to order them, Get them as close as you can. That's what we're going to say there. JC says, he's talking about uh, using steel wool and how you should not, I, I tell people to not use steel wool on their guitars. Fibers get stuck in the pickups. Okay, so how does that ruin it? What does it physically do to the pickup other than having tiny particles stuck somewhere? Potted pickups should have metal specks in the wires to begin with. What? That doesn't make sense. This doesn't even make sense. I agree, what you just said doesn't make sense. You think you know, that's purely your opinion and is not based on fact at all. Uh, apparently, JC, you were not paying attention <laughs> when you watched this video. I'm just gonna call you out on this. If you use steel wool on your guitar and those particles come loose and they stick to your pickups, here's what happens. They work their way down because these are magnets uh, and they will stick to the windings on the pickup. This is not based on my opinion. I've actually had to rewind pickups as a result of this. When you have steel wool particles on the windings of the pickups, then they will rust because humidity, um, sweat, all that sort of stuff, they will rust. That will break down the insulation on the coil wires and short the coil wires out and short your pickup out. Corrosion is the number one enemy of a single coil pickup. That is why old fender pickups fail, is corrosion. Typically, it's because the magnets rust from the inside out. But if you introduce medical particles from steel wool to the outside of the pickup, it will rust from the outside in, and it will accelerate the entire process where your pickup will die, and then you will have to send it to me, and I will have to rewind it for you. I do this all the time. This is not my opinion. This is fact. And next time it happens, I'll take a picture of it and show it to you. Watch it not happen to me now. Anyway, there you go. Uh, check out the other YouTube channel. Make sure you subscribe. Check out our Patreon. Uh, we got some cool videos coming up. Thanks for hanging out. And uh, I'll see you next time.